أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله again thank you thank you so much for for this invitation uh, uh, I'm coming back in the region and and uh, meeting again some of my shuyukh and the people who I consider as my teachers and people that I am learning from and uh, uh, I will try my best to come to, with some thoughts about uh, this issue of uh, related to uh, our uh, life in the West and our understanding of uh, uh, Sharia uh, in this context. I think that uh, as an introduction, it's quite uh, clear that uh, when it comes to our understanding of our own references, it's always quite important as uh, Muslims, as human beings, as citizens, to get it right from the very beginning and to set the framework within which we are talking. And there is something which is not disputable and that we have to start with uh, when it comes to our situation and all these discussions that we have around some of the Islamic concepts is, is to start with, uh, okay, where are we in this country and what do we have in the the Western country, oh, you don't uh, like this. It's better. No, oh, sorry. So, uh, where are we, uh, and uh, what are we talking about? And there is something which is quite clear in all the Western societies uh, that is uh, very important for all of us: that there are, from the very beginning, in any. Uh, secular society in any model of secular societies and we know that there are many models you know the American model is not at all like the French model which is not at all like the 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 the, the British model so we need to get the the contextual uh, implementation of some of the rules but everywhere there are common principles and the common principles uh, that we are relying on when it comes to our understanding that there are two main principles that are not disputable, freedom of conscience and freedom of worship. And this is the starting point of, again, closer, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> um, better? <laughs> okay, so uh, freedom of conscience and freedom of worship, meaning by this that uh, in any society, any Western societies, uh, by law and by definition, the state and the society should provide any religious community with freedom of conscience, which is understood as an individual right. You believe whatever you want if and as uh, a human beings and as a citizens you abide by the law of the country. The first principle of the legal framework is you believe in whatever you want. And I think it's the starting point because sometimes when we are dealing with our, uh, the people who are attacking Islam uh, and still repeating that Islam is not an American religion, they are targeting this and creating something which is a second class citizenship by uh, uh, spreading around a kind of mistrust. So we have to come back to the principle we are here dealing with freedom of conscience and freedom of worship is the collective, the community right that you can organize yourself as you want and the, the state and no one has the right to come and to interfere in anything which has to do with the religious community and the religion. So these are rights that are quite clear from the very beginning and we have to start with this. This is the framework within which we are talking. Why am I saying this? Because sometimes if you don't come back to the framework, you can be lost in discussions that people are driving you far from the principles and you are lost in secondary considerations that are not helping you to come with, no, before talking about your perceptions, let us come to the common framework. I'm not talking about, you can think whatever you want, at the end of the day, the common framework is where we have to stand together. And this is the United States of America, and the United States of America is not based on your perceptions, it's based on our common law. And this is the starting point of the discussion. So to be quite assertive, no, no, uh, no, knowing where we are talking. Now the second point, which is also important where we are, 
and sometimes is missing uh, within the religious communities, and not only the Muslim communities, but in many religious communities, is the knowledge of our own tradition. Because there is something which is important in the secular societies, in all the secular societies, and sometimes if you don't get it right, you are misled by the discussion, is sometimes you talk to people who are referring to Christianity and they themselves don't know enough about their own religion. In a secular society, sometimes you are dealing with people, they think that Christianity is this, or they think that Judaism is this, and they think that Islam is this. There is a level of ignorance in the general public, in the ordinary citizens, that you are dealing with people and you just understand that they are scared of you because they don't know their tradition. So a secular society, it's a space where we acknowledge the fact that there is freedom of conscience, freedom of uh, worship, but at the same time we have to be quite clear that from within our respective religious tradition we need to be serious about the knowledge of our tradition. And when we are facing people targeting Sharia, it's quite important as Muslims to know what we are talking about. What are our references and first the, uh, uh, the terminology. So the legal uh, framework is important, but at the same time knowing our tradition. And there are three dimensions. And when we heard the Sheikh uh, talking right now, he was referring to a, a, a triangle, in fact, in what we are uh, dealing with. The first is really to be quite clear about the terminology. Anyone, and you know, it's coming from within the communities. We have, for example, some uh, so-called Muslim intellectuals and scholars now in the West, in the Europe, or in America. There are some of them saying, you want, do you want to know who is dangerous among the Muslims? Anyone who is referring to Sharia is dangerous. We have Muslims saying to our fellow citizens, anyone who is, who is uh, talking about Sharia is dangerous. In fact, they are spreading a wrong understanding of the, the, the concept and spreading around that there is a suspicion. And this is where we are very, very, it's very important. Our responsibility is great to come with the right terminology and not to accept that people are asking us, are expecting from us that we remove some words of our uh, terminology. Sharia is central, we are not going to give up on it. Jihad, if we understand the very meaning of jihad, it has nothing to do with holy war, it's central in our tradition. And we have not only to use it, but to define it, to understand it, and to spread the right understanding from within. And this is our responsibility. So terminology is the starting point of the discussion. The second is, with the terminology, is the meaning. What is the meaning of what we are struggling for, the standing for, is the meaning of, of our religion and the meaning of uh, uh, the rituals, the prohibitions, the duties. We have to explain. We, we, are not, we should not come with a set of principles with no explanation. So we need the terminology as to the words we are using, and we need the meaning as to what we are doing. How we pray, why we pray, why we fast, this is simple. But then the way we deal with the surrounding society, why, for example, I was asked just before, what is uh, one of the main challenges uh, for Western Muslims today? Very often is that our fellow citizens, because there is this uh, ongoing controversies, every month we have a new, controversies, uh, a new controversy in the country, is that our fellow citizens sometimes, because what they hear at the national level, there is a lack of trust. They don't exactly know what we want. So this is why when the people are questioning what we want, we have to explain the meaning of what we do. And this is the way we will explain what we want. So this is something which is also part of all the discussion. And then also the objectives. The objectives is the meaning and, and what are our goals in our society. So, for example, it's not enough among Muslims to say we want to be an added value, we want to reconcile people with ethical behavior and, and morality. That's all good, but this has to be explained in a way which is not in general terms. It has to be visible in our daily activities and, and, and us as citizens being witnesses uh, to our message before people. It's part of what we have to do, and it's part of our, the essence of our presence. Having said that now, we come to uh, 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 the first dimension, which is understanding what we are talking about and understanding the very meaning of some of the words that we are using. 
And here comes, you know, Sharia, and, and as uh, 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 Dr. Muzammel Sadiq was referring to, if you come to the three verses, you understand that there is something which is a connection between the final message and the connection with the previous messages, that there is a tradition that Sharia is not only us. For Muslims, as the last revelation, it's coming from the very beginning, from the starting of all the revelations, even with the creation and, and the first uh, 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 we, human presence on earth. And this is why you have لِكُلِّنْ جَعَلْنَ مِنْكُمْ شِرْعَةً وَمِنْهَاجَ And this verse, it's very important saying what? To every community and religious community, we gave them so a set of law, but also a path and a praxis, which is the way you translate this into reality, a methodology. So meaning by this, that there is no religion, there is no spiritual community coming from God which has no reference to the way you pray, the way you deal, the way you act, and the way you deal with people from other faiths. So this is something for us which is what we have is what was given to people before us. And we are following. So this is something which is important. And you have another verse uh, which is uh, uh, also important and was also quoted meaning by this that what is giving to you it's also connected to the people so you have something which is to every tradition there is a methodology a set of principles and a way towards faithfulness to God because it's important. And the second is what was given to Noah, it's what is given to you. You have exactly the same, so you are following in the same path, which means that your singularity as Muslim with the final message is rooted in the universality of all the messages. So you got the point? Your singularity is coming from the universality of the same thing. You are in a history, a sacred history of messages. So we need to come with this very often the Muslims, they are responding as if, you know, they accept it. They accept the situation or the position within which they are put by the people as you are the other. No, sorry. What we are understanding with the final is that's the final of many. And we are in the universal message. And then if you come to the last one, which is, ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاكِ عَلَى شَرِيعَةٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْرِ فَاتَّبِعْهَا And this is now disconnected from the whole tradition, now we gave you a way, a path, a set of law. Now follow it. And فَتَّبِعْهَا it's important. Because it's not something which is, as you said, Dr. Muzamin, it's not something which is static. It's a way. You have principles at the beginning, and you have a path, and you have to think at the principles at the beginning in order to understand the context in which you live, in order to be faithful to the principles and to go towards your goal. So you have principles, you have a path, and you have qast, ahdaf, maqasid. It's, and this is where the scholars are coming with maqasid al-shari'a, saying what are the higher principles of this path that we have to... So we are not only following prints or implementing principles, we have goals. We want to achieve something. So it's a path, it's very dynamic. So our sharia is coming from a history it's coming from a series of, of messages, and it's telling us, be faithful to the principles in the way you are trying to be good Muslims in this society in order to achieve the goals that were set for you. When we come with this, we understand that first, it's a universal dimension. Second, it's a very deep responsibility. Why? Because you need to get the principles and you need to get the goals, what you are trying to achieve. So anyone, wherever you are, as citizens and Muslim citizens, you need to have clear goals for what you want to achieve where you are. Based on the principles that are universal and based on the context within which you live. You have to have the two understanding. What could be done here and what are the universal principles? Now, when you have this understanding of the, 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 the verses and the understanding of it's a path, because you know the fuqaha, the jurist, everyone, and it's known in any sciences, in any social sciences, human sciences or experimental sciences, you always have the definition of the word depending on your specialization. 
of course, you are coming, you, and we have this, in fact, even in, in you know, the Islamic sciences, is mustalahat, they are using some words in a very specific way. The fuqaha, the jurists, the Muslim jurists, uh, uh, were using uh, sharia as something which is really very much linked with law, a set of law. If you come to some, you know, people who are much more uh, dealing with morality, ethics. You say, no, it's behavior as well. And this is where we have exactly what you said. It's behavior, it's the creed, it's a conduct, it's action. And some Sufi are saying it's even deep in your heart. You have to have your sharia in your heart. Meaning you have to implement this sharia in your heart. What does it mean? Are you going to have very specific law for your heart? No. It's a way you are dealing with universe with God first. So for example, being able to say to love him is the, the, is the center of the Sharia in your heart. So how do you experiment this? It has to do with love. It has to do when a Christian is saying God is love and you have to try to love him, we are saying exactly Sharia. You got that? That's very positive. This is our Sharia. In you, you have to love him. And, and this dimension, which is, if you love him, you get the good behavior, and then you deal with the law in something which is enlightened, not something which is rigid and fixed and not uh, 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 dynamic in our understanding. So this is the, 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 the deep understanding. Now, if you come to a step further now, and we try to deal with the people, the way they are talking, and the way we need to talk about it. First, there is something that uh, even the Muslims are uh, not really uh, aware of that. And you said it very quickly, and I think that we have to repeat it because this is something which is so important. Yes, we have immutable principles. It's not going to change. And it's going to change, and this is where it's giving us our strength as Muslims. Al Aqeedah. La ilaha illallah. And then the fact that we are, you know, the, 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 to testify there is only one God. That we are praying and fasting and, and all the pillars. And this is where it's really the, the, the fundamental and the foundations. This is not going to change. And some of the prohibitions and some of our duties are not going to change. Wherever we are, whoever we are dealing with, this is important. The concept of, you know, honesty and justice is not in anything in the Islamic tradition. It's not you are just with your brothers and sisters and you are unjust and you may be unjust with people of other faiths. We don't have this kind of distinction. You should be fair and just and honest with every human being. The only way to be a good Muslim is to be honest with everyone. Whoever he or she is, believers or not believers, you have to respect the rights of the people. So the point, the starting point here is, when it comes to our understanding, is that we have principles, but we have things that are moving and our understanding should, should change. You know, very often people don't get me right when I say we have to promote reform. We, are not, we should not reform Islam, we should reform the Muslim minds in the way we are dealing with the environment. So we deal with the environment and say, okay, there are things that have, we have to move on. We have to think about how do we are going to implement this. So there is the Sharia as a path is flexible. So we can, depending on the context, the scholars were very courageous. Some of them were saying, yes, we can move this. Still, in the name of our faithfulness to the principles, we have to change our mind, change our priorities, implement this in such a way. Meaning what? You need to know the context within which you live. So the American Muslims, if they want to be faithful to their principles and their Sharia, they should understand the American society. We should understand the, you know, the constitution of this country. You are not going to be faithful to your tradition and to your Sharia if you don't even understand the laws of the countries and the constitution, and everything which has to do with the history of this country, because you will find that many things that are already in the American constitution are quite clearly close to, to, to what we are saying and what we are promoting as Muslims. So it's not flexible, it's, it's very flexible, and there it's not closed. It's an open system. And we have to keep this uh, open and, 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 and open to our understanding. Why? The, 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 when we speak about Sharia, it's an open system, meaning what? Meaning that the first scholars, when they started to think about, you know, implementing, and if you look at 
the way, for example, uh, the Prophet, wassalam, peace be upon him, when he arrived in uh, Medina, he didn't start by saying, we remove all the law, everything is wrong, and we start from, from, from scratch. No. Everything which was good was already there, and he kept it, saying, this is us, this is my, this is my religion. I don't have a problem with this, we keep it. Now, what was bad, what was wrong, when it was, you know, uh, tribalism and, and, and injustice, he was to reform that. But the good is good, whatever is the source of the good, when it's good is good. So, when you have someone who is coming with a good idea, I would say, are you a Muslim to have this such a good idea? And we keep it if you are a Muslim. No, the source of a good, it's not important. If it's good and you can, inter in, you can integrate it in your system, you do this. So the point here is that it's flexible and not closed. It's an open system and flexible system, dynamic. And when we are saying this, we are saying that who are going to be instrumental in the whole process? The Muslim scholars and the Muslims themselves. So we need to understand that our understanding of our reference is very critical here in being able to take from the society, to be creative, to, imp to be flexible, to know our priorities. This is where, as Muslims, we are dealing in the right way with uh, Sharia. The second point, which is important, and this is where the Muslims and the American Muslims and the Western Muslims should do much more than what they are doing. You will find in the history of law, when it comes to philosophy of law or history of law, that many of the laws that we have in Europe, many of the things that were implemented in Europe, if you look at the history of law, many of the things came from the Jewish and the Islamic legal tradition that were based in Europe and helping the European to find a legal framework. Meaning by this that when you come and you have people looking at us saying, you are the others, so you have to respect our system, you should respond, but it might be that in what you perceive as your system, we are already inside. And it's not, it's not a joke. In the history of philosophy of law, and we think about Ishatibi in the 14th century, you can see that what he was producing a synthesis of maqasid al-sharia was something which was helping the philosophy of law that you find in the Enlightenment. The problem is that we are ignorant of our own history. We are ignorant of what was given by Muslim legal philosopher. And you know, there is a philosophy of law. So very often as Muslims, oh, philosophy is bad. Philosophy of law is good. But the point here is to be able to understand that this creative attitude that you find in the Jewish tradition, by the way, the Jewish tradition and the Muslim tradition all together in Andalusia were doing great things and helping the Europeans and the Europeans help the Americans. You should reconnect the American history with the European history and the European history with the Muslim presence. And you will find that it's not a closed system that is far from the American foundation. The fundamentals of the European legal system, you will find that it's very much inspired by many things that was, were done by the Muslim scholars. So if you only think, as very often we think in Europe, that the Muslims and the Arabs were only translating philosophers and they didn't provide anything, and we repeat this, I think that this is wrong. We need to come with a deep understanding that what we call the Sharia system and the path, many principles are and inspired the European and the Western legal system in a positive way. And we have to study this. In a, why am I saying this? Because what we are facing now is people putting us outside the, 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 the legal framework of the West and, and portraying us as the others. And we accept that very too quickly. By responding, the way we respond is confirming the way they ask the question. I'm always saying something that you have to be, I think it's a, it's a philosophy of life. When you are questioned on one issue, you sometimes have to question the question. I say, I don't like your question. I think it's wrong. Because the question is putting you in a situation where if you answer the question, you are already falling into the trap. If you understand what I mean. It's our daily life anyway. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, I think that this is a, a, a point. The, th the third point that I wanted to make here is, as I said, 
it's, it's, we need to, to take from the society things that are uh, good. So, for example, uh, uh, you, uh, you, you look at the American system. And by the way, uh, not everything which we find in Muslim-majority countries is faithful to what we call, you know, the Islamic path and the Islamic principles and what we would like, what you said is so, so, we all know this. All the Muslims are very much critical of what, what is happening in Muslim majority countries. We are betraying many of our principles. But the point is that if we are betraying many of our principles in Muslim majority countries, it happens in fact that in the West sometimes many of the things that we are promoting as Muslims are already implemented. And my point is, when, for example, the American Constitution is saying to all of us, whatever is your religion, whatever is your color, whatever is your gender, you are going to be treated equally by law, this is my Sharia. So it's not a closed system, it's an, it's an integrative system. The way we deal with culture is the way we deal with law. Any good law coming from everywhere is mine. So it's my Sharia. So instead of having, you know, the people saying, oh, with, you want to colonize with your Sharia, I say, no, it's exactly the opposite. Everything which is good in this country is our Sharia. So our Sharia is already implemented. So, so I think that it, we have to change our perception by being integrative, understanding the integrative dynamic of Sharia. So we take everything which is good, and when we have uh, justice before law, it's us. And it's not a closed system coming to colonize, it's an open system taking the good everywhere it's, it found it. It founds it, in find, it finds it. So this is the, the, the third point, uh, uh, with, and the fourth point with the, the integrative, integrative system. And there's something else that I wanted to, uh, to add is, we need also to be quite clear, and you said it, and I think that we have to repeat that, is that when it comes to Sharia, it's not only, we are not only dealing with a legal system. We are, legal, we are dealing with morality and ethics. And this is where, for example, we are, you know, the way we, we need to serve the people. What we have to do is justice and generosity and solidarity. It's part of our Sharia. What we, our spirituality is, is the, the heart of our Sharia. And we have to come with a discourse here which has to do with, you know, the understanding of the mission, the goal. I was sent but to uh, uh, accomplish, to to beautify, to, to, to just to implement the, the good character, the good behavior. And this is our Sharia. So our solidarity, the way, you know, when I was talking with the, 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 the leaders of many organizations in the region and, and what they are doing with, to the poor people, the homeless and all this, this is all Sharia. This is all the right way to be a, a human being. And we have to, to keep on repeating this by saying that this is where, as Muslims, we, uh, we are promoting uh, this kind of understanding of uh, the spiritual dimension, the, 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 the ethical dimension of Sharia in our understanding. So this is where we come with, we keep the word, we explain the word, and we deepen the understanding of the word. Putting something which is quite important, it takes effort to implement this good behavior, respecting the law. And, and by the way, in, in, in the beginning of the 90s, when I was challenged, you know, in the secular society, this was in Europe, and I wrote to be a European Muslim, uh, the people were saying, if you want to be a good European citizen or an American citizen, you have to do it despite your reference to Sharia. And my answer is exactly the opposite. It's because I respect Sharia that I'm going to respect the law of the country. Exactly what you said. It's in the name of my Sharia that I respect the law of the country. I'm going to be a good American citizen because of my Sharia, not despite of Sharia. Because my Sharia is telling me, El Muslimun and Ashurutihim, that you have to respect your contract. And I have a contract with this country that I'm going to be a good citizen and I am promoting what is good. So it's very deep. It's in fact, our reference to Sharia is pushing us to be good citizens to be serving the country, to want the best for this country. So all this deep understanding is the first part of our discussion. And if I come to the second part and, 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 and heading to my, towards my conclusion, I think that uh, um, what we have to do with this understanding is now to come with the understanding of the, the society. And 
to be at the same time assertive as to our rights and understanding as, our, as to our priorities. We should not let the people who are attacking us setting our priorities at the periphery of what we are and who we are. We have to decide this. And this is the danger, that people are attacking us as a strategic distraction. They are pushing us to set the priorities far from what we want to do. We end up responding and not heading towards our goals. And it's dangerous. Because some people, they think that they are strong because they are reacting, because they are vocal. But this is exactly what, do, what the people want. Remember something which is important in the, 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 the history of, uh, of uh, the Muslims in, in, in America. Remember something which was said by, uh, by Malcolm X, rahimahullah. You know, he was on media and everywhere when he was aggressive. And they were just very happy to have him being aggressive and to speak in the name of blackness against whiteness. He became to be dangerous when he stopped that. And he started to open up towards, it's not a question of conflict, it's a question of principles. Black, white, Muslims, non-Muslims, come together in the name of justice. And this is where you are dangerous. You can be very much instrumentalized when you are aggressive and reactive. It's less the case when you have a vision. You are active and you know what you want to do uh, and in which way you want to do. So. The first is to come within the framework that I was uh, uh, describing at the beginning and understanding what is the meaning of Sharia, this open uh, system, flexibility is part of it, understanding that everything which is good is ours, that we take from the... It's very open, it's very dynamic, assertive, and at the same time we have to be confident that we can take everything which is good. And some of the things that are in America are better than in many Muslim-majority countries. And we know this, we are experiencing this. We know that what it means sometimes in Muslim-majority countries, how much is difficult for Muslims just to be good Muslims because of the oppression, because of the, there is no freedom, because this is something that we know it's difficult. Of course we have our own challenges, but for every community there is a way and there are challenges. You know that this is our way of dealing and, and you know there is no sharia without positive jihad and this is why jihad has nothing to do with holy war jihad is efforts to try to reach our goals resistance to what is bad and promoting what is good in order to reach our goals so res, uh, jihad the definition is two ways resisting and reforming and this is what we are trying to do in wherever we are we resist to what is bad and we are promoting what is good Yes, I'm forgetting. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so, uh, first thing in the framework is to come back with the good understanding, equipped with what we know about our religion as Muslims, and what we know about uh, what is, uh, what are the rights of Christians and Jews and Buddhists and Hindus and atheists and agnostic in this country, is to say, you should in this society our choices are respected by a law and it's not of your business to tell us how do we have to be good Muslims or how do you expect us to be Muslims this is our business is not yours and this is by the secular system itself the secular system is saying to the state you should ha you have nothing to it's not of your business to talk to the Muslims about their religion or the Christians is their business so as Muslims you have you must be we must be clear on we are deciding what it means to be a Muslim and what are our principles and what we want to uh, want to want what we want to uh, implement and in which way we want to be Muslims and this is a starting point is the starting point of being assertive with we know our rights and this is clear for all of us. The second thing which is important is to know also how it works with other traditions. And this is where you can see in all the, the constitutions in the legal framework that there are things that are possible for the Christians and the Jews and other traditions that they are not exceptions to the legal framework, but the legal framework is allocating a space for you to find a way when it comes to private affairs or things that have to do with family. So this is, as you were saying, it's already there for the Jewish tradition, for the Christian tradition, and 
Now, some of the people, the tea parties and the populists, when you ask for the same rights, they'll say, oh, we know, you Muslims, you want specific laws. They say, no, we are within the framework. Remember the big controversy that we have with the Archbishop of Canterbury. When he was talking about Sharia and saying, we have to allocate a space for Muslims, he was not saying a parallel system, but he, he, uh, he, 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 he talked about Sharia and the big controversy started. Why? Because the perception is Sharia means parallel system. No, in fact, and you heard about the story in Canada, in Ontario, when the Muslims wanted exactly the same law as the Jews. And it was already there for the Jews and the Christians. And the people were saying, oh, the Muslims want specific laws. And this is why we have to be equipped. And we have to be equipped understanding what, are, what is the latitude that we have in the common law to respect our specific law. And it's not against the common law, it's within. Because within, there is a latitude. And we need to know this by, know, by knowing the other traditions and to be in touch with the Jews, the Christians. It's not a struggle for us against all the others. So this is why we need to have collaboration with other traditions and, and to be able to, to deal with this by saying, within the common legal framework, there is a room for us to find our ways and to find, you know, uh, arbitration or court and, and, and this kind of uh, commissions that we have, uh, committees for uh, arbitration committees that we have, it's not against the British law, against the American law, it's by the American law themselves that we, we can do it. And this is why we have to challenge the people who are saying when we are asking this, because we are Muslims, that we want specific laws. We know we want exactly to implement what is common for all of us. So this is where this knowledge of the Constitution, the knowledge of the, the, the rights that uh, all the other religious traditions, and to have this kind of collaboration, it's very important for us uh, not to be uh, uh, put in a situation where we are struggling uh, alone. Two points that I wanted to, to add here is uh, uh, sometimes it's legal and right to ask for some rights. You can do that. And sometimes it's wiser not to ask them at a specific moment because you are going to be used. So this is why as Muslims, the leadership should know when and why. Because sometimes in a state of necessity, you can find your way with the flexibility of Islam. So it's better to use the flexibility of Islam than to be confrontational in order to get your rights. Why? Because you are creating the controversy that is going to come against you. So you have to be smart. Is it necessary? It's legal, but maybe not necessary now to ask for this. And this is something which is a way we are dealing with the society. The leadership, the Muslim leaders should understand that sometimes is right. You have the right to ask, but it's not the right moment to ask. Hmm. Not easy. It means that you have a vision. You know your steps. You are not reacting. And the problem is that you have some people, they know exactly our weaknesses. They are going to push us to ask and say, you know, this is it. This is what you want. You want this specific law. And they are going to use, they push you to react, and we react exactly the way some wants, uh, want, want us to react. We need to have a vision and to set our steps. And our steps is we respect the law of the land. We don't have a problem. And if there is a specific situation, we will find we, we need to decide what are our priorities, depending on our vision. And this is something which comes with our understanding of the country, our understanding of the challenges, because all this has nothing to do with law, by the way. Be careful. The law are protecting us, but the law are instruments of power. The problem that we have with the American, the, the French, and the British, and the Western law are not the law, are the readers of the law. Who is reading the law? Sometimes the people who have power, they are going to distort the reading so the articles are right, the interpretation is wrong. Or the interpretation is full of prejudices. And you are dealing with people who are using the law in order to protect themselves from you. While the law was at the beginning to come with all of us and, and to integrate all of us within the, the, the framework. So this is where it's important to be careful in the, with the political game and the populists and the Tea Party. This is what they want to do. If you look at uh, and you read, for example, in the, 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 the New York Times, something which is quite uh, 
uh, interesting, David Yerushalmi, the one who is behind all this campaign, he was saying something which was quite interesting. He said, I don't care if the bills are, you know, this, all the things that we have in these uh, two dozen uh, uh, states that where they are acting in Sharia. He said, the point is that we need the controversy. The controversy is important. Why? Because you have the atmosphere that Sharia is becoming problematic. So, the, you know, and, and when there is an atmosphere, the way the people are going to read the law, the way the people are going to talk about it, it's creating something negative. And when the negativity is there, you are winning the case. So he doesn't care about succeeding or not succeeding. The controversy is a success in itself. And some Muslims, they don't get it. They are very happy to go up in the controversy. And they are nurturing the controversy. And they don't understand. They think that they are responding and this is their rights. And they are doing exactly what they wanted is to have the controversy. So sometimes we have to deal with this in a way which is smarter than that because we are not dealing with people who are sincere. We are dealing with quite a dirty politics is to, to, to stigmatize, is to rejection, is racism, is xenophobia, is Islamophobia. This is, and sometimes ignorance. I think that we, not, we need to get this as some people that we are dealing with our sincerity, but the good Muslims are religiously sincere, politically aware. Not religiously sincere, politically naive, as we have some of our brothers. They, they, they don't get the, the whole picture. So the leadership should get these two things, sincerity and justice and honesty. We should, this is not disputable. We are going to, to remain sincere, but not stupid, not silly, not naive in the whole discussion. Coming to my last point, uh, when it comes to, 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 to this and having this uh, in, in mind, I think that uh, our reaction here, it's important. And we, we need to take advantage of, of what is happening. All the surveys, and I was uh, interested, I, I, I just got some figures that were quite interesting about, you know, the young American people being very positive about Muslims and the Muslim presence. Uh, what was the figure exactly? It was 80 percent. 80 percent of the young, the young Americans are quite positive with the Muslim presence. We have exactly the same figures in, 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 in European countries. In fact, the youngest generation they are less scared of the Muslim presence. You know why? Because they know them. They are at school, uh, they are in sc at school together. Uh, and, 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 and this connection, this relationship coming from many different dimensions. It's cultural, it's, it's uh, uh, entertainment, it's, it's uh, sports, it's, it's the presence is completely different. And they are not, the, they don't have the same prejudices. And we have to get it right that uh, be careful of not being, having a distorted view about your own society. The national controversies are completely different from the local dynamics. And the local dynamics are succeeding now. All these political parties that are coming and say integration is failing, it's not working, or the, the tea parties are coming. In fact, they are creating the problem because at the grassroots level, it's working. It's exactly the opposite of what they are saying. So if you focus on this discourse and this instrumentalization, you can just lose hope. It's the, it's, we need to react completely differently. And the best thing, and this is what uh, uh, Professor John has, uh, with whom I was this afternoon, was saying, if you lose hope, it's over. And we should not lose hope, not only just because for the sake of not losing hope, we have to look at the last 20 years. Look at what, ha what has been done in the country. The Muslim presence, the mosques, the institutionalization of the Muslim presence in this country through organizations, mosques, schools, it works. So this, it, in fact, it's exactly the opposite. It's because it works that they are so vocal. It's the opposite. Do you know the, the African proverb saying, we start throwing uh, uh, stones at the, at the fruit tree when the tree is bearing its fruits? Yes. We have to be positive with this. We have to understand that slowly with our understanding, but it doesn't mean that we don't have responsibilities. All what was I saying, knowing our religion, knowing our principles, knowing our environment, knowing the United States of America, and to come with something which is not a reactive discourse. We, have to, we need to have a vision with something which is a, a wise, confident uh, uh, discourse, and take advantage of 
uh, uh, from all what is said. And this is why I always want to remind the Muslims. And it's also true in the Christian tradition and the Jewish tradition. When the people are attacking you, one of the dimensions of you, our spirituality is two things. First is to get salamat in nafs, inner peace that we're not trying to get. But how are you going to get this spirituality alive? Sometimes it's also through the attacks coming from outside. And all the messengers, all the prophets, all the prophetic traditions, all the spiritual tradition, they know that sometimes it's because you have people attacking you that you keep the meaning of your spirituality. Because if you are not attacked, you can be lost. So this is where you have two verses that are important. الَّذِينَ إِذَا قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَادَاهُمْ إِيمَانًا so the point is, the people can come and just attacking you, and then the people are saying, Scare, be sc you have to be scared. You are, you know, you are under attack, and this is nurturing your fear. Zadahum iman. It's growing in, they are increasing in, in, in faith. That at the end of the day, your attacks are helping me to get this strong spirituality. He is the best master. This is the one I want to follow. I think that the Muslim discourse in America should not be reactive to the attack, but use the attack as something which is a spiritual means to increase our understanding of the meaning of our presence here. We are here to serve this country despite your attacks. We are here to serve this country for the better, and we are not confusing American citizens with some of the trends and the populists and the Tea Parties and the neoconservative and the racist in this country. You are not representing this country. But you know what you are serving? To what you are serving? You are helping me to come to the center. You are helping me to come. And my answer, and this is the second verse, is وَعِبَادُ Rahman. Rahman is the most merciful. الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا This is important, is two things. Is first, increasing our faith, and second, wisdom and patience. It's going to be difficult, it's going to be a long process, but when the ignorance are attacking you, peace be with you. Peace be with you, we have time. We are working at the grassroots level. We are not going to react. The reactions that you, are, you want would be our weaknesses. Our way of being wise is our strength. Salam. And this is where we have to be humble and not aggressive. I, I, I want to, to, to say this because sometimes the people are so obsessed with the, the attacks that they lose hope and they don't understand that sometimes it's a means for you to remain a good, you know, aware. This awareness is important. And then we carry on our work. We don't respond, but we respond in another way. And our response is our schools, our institutions. And the way we have, you know, look at this room. We have some people who are uh, 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 American Christians, uh, American Jews, American atheists and agnostic. This is America. This the people that we want with us. We are your friends, you are our friends, and for the sake of this country, we have to work together. Because you know what? The danger is not here. The danger is in front of the door. These are the dangerous people for the future of America. These are the people who are racist. And this is why we have to come with this confidence. And together we go out and, as it was said, don't respond and say, Salam. Peace be with you. And we go and you do the job. So I think that this understanding, this wisdom that is necessary is our spiritual understanding of our religion. But take it like this. Anyone who is insulting you, anyone who is rejecting you, anyone who is attacking you, take the best of what he is doing or she is doing and say, okay, you are helping me to be better. You are helping me just to be patient. Because you know what? No, you don't. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.